Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so our uh, our lesson subject this morning is uh, spiritual warfare. I guess it's afternoon. <clears throat> spiritual warfare. Uh, just follow along in your notes. Um, Again, I might not be sticking very close to them, even though there are some areas where I will follow. Um, when a person encounters Jesus, amen, um, how do they respond? How do they respond to the presence of God when, when God moves in their life, whether it's in a church setting whether it's at home, uh, it could be in a car, it could be at your job, it could be anywhere where God decides to move on your life. I know for me, it was at home. I remember uh, sitting in my bedroom and I was, I was a mess. Um, and I felt the presence of God move into, my, move into that room, amen, and the atmosphere just totally changed. And uh, I remember I began to weep. And I began to cry, and uh, I began to ask God, God, I don't, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know what I'm feeling. I know it's you. I know the your presence is real. Um, and I just, I asked God for clarity. God, I, I need clarity. I need you to help me because I don't know. I came out of a a world of addiction. I came out of a, you know, at that time, it was a failed, a failed relationship. Even though I was in a relationship, I eventually married the girl that I was living with at that time. Um, but we were both a mess. We were both <clears throat> uh, heavily drinking. Uh, drugs were a very, um, so I thought, important part of my life back then. I was living in a house where there was... There was probably 14 or 15 of us there, a lot of them kids, and it was just it was just chaos, and that's where God found me. He didn't He didn't wait till I came to church. Amen. In other words, God will will reach us in our condition. Amen. He does that on numerous occasions. Can He reach us in in a church setting? Absolutely, He'll reach us in a church setting, but it really depends on what we're willing to give to God. Amen. We don't always uh, we don't always understand uh, what God is doing in our lives. The next question I have is: Does he or she become a Christian at that point in time when God moves on our life? Well, no, because it it really takes an understanding. You know, God can move on your life, and you can repent. You could say, God, I'm tired of the, this condition. I, I I'm asking you to change my life. I'm asking you to help me. Amen. Um, and it, it, I, 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 can, I, I can honestly say that I didn't convert at that point in time. It was still a process for me to get a hold of what God was trying to do on, uh, in, in my life. Amen. And so there was a lot of struggles. Remember, I was, I was addicted to drugs. I was, I was a, really a borderline alcoholic. I was... Uh, I hung around the pool halls. I wanted to be a professional pool player when I was probably 18 years old. <coughs> and I, <coughs> excuse me, I studied the game. I, I lived the game. I breathed the game. I had a pool table in my living room. Uh, I was so dedicated to this lifestyle of playing pool. I'd get on the road and we'd travel, you know, we'd travel to different states. We'd play pool and we'd hustle pool. That's what I did. That's what I loved to do. And, and I dedicated my whole life to that and uh, God was basically saying look if you want to be part of my kingdom uh, why don't you dedicate your life to me like you've dedicated it to this game of pool and I wish I could say that automatically I started doing that <clears throat> but it took me <clears throat> it took me years and years and years to acclimate to what God was requiring of me you see I had to come to a choice in my life. And every one of us has to come to this place of decision. And we have to decide, do we want to be part of God's kingdom? Every one of us has to make that choice. And nobody can make that choice for you. 
There's a lot of people that can say, come on, it's better. Come on to the other side. Make cross over to this other lifestyle. But ultimately, it's your choice. It's your decision. You could still sit in a church atmosphere and still be in the same condition that you were before you came in. I'm living proof of that. It took me, uh, I, I received the Holy Ghost and I was baptized in 1986. I didn't really commit myself to God. I was like 32 years old. I didn't really commit myself to God until I was 40. Till I was released from prison, Brother Jerry, I didn't, I didn't give my life to God. It took me a long time. And, and it, it, it took me to come to an understanding of God, I've tried it on my own for many, many, many years. I'm not going to do that anymore. I want you to help me. And because we make up our mind and we say, okay, God, this is what I want to do, God introduces us to uh, a lifestyle that is totally foreign than the lifestyle that, uh, that we thought was uh, this great kingdom of God. And because that, God knows that in this new lifestyle, in this spiritual kingdom, we're going to face things that we never faced before. And in order to defeat the enemy, in order to have victory in this kingdom of God uh, uh, aspect, we're going to need tools. We're going to need weapons. Jesus knows if we decide to follow him, that he cannot leave us without the ability to fight. Amen. We need weapons of warfare. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12 says this, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. In other words, warfare is never meant to be fun. It's not for the faint at heart. Many people, including me, have lost their lives, their families, things that they cherish in life, so many things that we lose along this journey, so many things that I've suffered over this life of being a Christian, amen. I have children that are not serving God because of my choices, the choices I made. I didn't really um, commit myself to God fully, amen, until I was 40. And along that journey, I lost a wife, I've been divorced. I had children. Some of those kids are not serving God. And it was because of the choices that I made. I wasn't fully invested. Yes, I wanted to change, but there were some things inside of me that I had a hard time uh, transitioning out of my life. It was very difficult for me to uh, live for God. <clears throat> and so many people have lost their lives, their families. I'm sure in this atmosphere here, um, when you gave yourself to God, there were some things that you had to release. There were some things that you had to let go of. Why? Because they hindered us from growing in God. They hindered us from God developing us into what God wants us to be. God wants us to be soldiers, amen. God wants us to be, <coughs> to be Christians, amen. The Bible says that there is an invisible war that every human being is fighting. And this becomes more noticeable when we are born into this spiritual kingdom. Did you know that when you received the Holy Ghost, that when you gave your life to God and you were baptized in his name, that you uh, now had a target on your back, that the devil identified you as an enemy, praise God, that the, de the devil would do nothing to, to uh, get you to stop serving God. He doesn't want you to serve God. He doesn't want you to be part of the kingdom of God. He hates God. And because God is living inside of you, he hates you too. And so when you go through trials and you go through difficulties, amen, and you ha you're having a tough time, sometimes some of those attacks, Brother Jerry, are from Satan himself. Sometimes those attacks are from our own desires that we either don't want to let go or we have a hard time letting go. We haven't taken victory. We haven't gotten victory over these issues before. 
I remember for me, you know, there's men in here, so I'm going to be transparent with you guys. I had a problem with lust. I had a difficult time with lust. And lust in my life to this day still tries to rise up and it tries to control my mind. Amen. And so because God has given me weapons, amen, weapons of prayer, weapons of the word of God, He's given me armor, praise God. He's given me a shield of faith, amen. He's given me the ability to fight, praise God. I'm not going to run from my problems, amen. I'm going to attack them head on, amen. The Bible tells me, amen, that I don't have any protection on the back, amen. There's nothing behind me, so if I run, I'm a target, amen. He's going to shoot an arrow on my back, so I'm going to face him head on. I'm going to fight the enemy. Why? Because the Bible says that we take it by violence. We take it by force. Amen. And that's how I live my life. Amen. Do certain things still come upon me? As I said, absolutely. And I know when that seed of lust rises up in my life, I have to subdue it immediately. Because if I don't, it's going to overtake me. And it's going to sweep me away. Praise God. 1 John chapter 5, 1, 4 says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is, uh, that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him um, that begot, everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that the love of, the love of, by this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, we keep his commandments. Amen. I want to do what's right. And so when God, uh, God's word is preached in my life, or when I read the word of God, I want to conform to God's word. I don't want God's word to conform to me. Amen. I want to conform to God's word. Why? Because I want God's word to transform my mind. I want God's word to transform the way I think, praise God. And if I try to apply God's word, if I allow God's word to be applied to my mind, it'll seep into my heart. Amen. And when it's seep into my heart and it's in my mind, it controls my actions. Praise God. Some people live for God with just a mental affirmation of what the word of God is. But they never allow it to affect their heart. And if you're controlled by your mind, it will never, you will never allow your, the word of God to move your heart or to affect the way you feel your emotions. God wants a balanced man. He wants your body. He wants your mind. He wants your heart. He doesn't want part of you. He wants all of you. Praise God. And if I give God my mind and if I allow the word to affect my heart, he's going to direct me in the right way and it's going to allow me to be sensitive to his voice. Amen. The Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. It's because David meditated on the word of God. David realized when he made mistakes that he would have to go to God, amen. And the Bible says he repented. In other words, he realized that he was doing something wrong and he made a 180 and he says, okay, I I know that I messed up here and I'm going to turn around and I'm just going to ask for forgiveness and I'm going to start over again. I'm glad that we serve a God that allows us to start over again. Praise God. I'm glad that God doesn't say, okay, you made a mistake, you're out, amen. Anybody with children, amen, understand what I'm talking about. Anybody that's ever been in a relationship understands what I'm talking about, amen. It goes on, verse 3, it says, For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Think about that. They're not that difficult, praise God. God doesn't make it so hard to where we can't follow what God wants us to follow. It's simply a giving of ourselves. It's a laying down of our flesh. It's a laying down of our habits. It's a laying down of our desires that would influence our actions 
to push God to the side. Verse 4, for whatsoever is born of God, watch this, it overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. What's faith? Faith is trust. Faith is confidence that God can do what his word claims it can do. Praise God. If I can have confidence in anything, it's his word. It's his word. That's why we need to be established on his word. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Praise God. Casting down evil intentions desires, things that would hinder us from growing in God, things that are a distraction, amen. And every high thing, see these, these, these imaginations, they will lift themselves up, amen, and they will try to reign over your life, amen. But we got to cast these imaginations down, amen. And everything, every high thing that exalted itself against the word of God, the knowledge, knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. We have the power to do that. When something rises up, you need to knock it down. How do you knock it down? Too many times we want to do this through our own power. You can't defeat the devil through your own power. You can't defeat your lust, amen, by your own strength, amen, we need, I need, you need the power of God. We need the strength of God. We need the word of God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And so we need to know our enemy. I like this setting. It says, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Praise God. When God has delivered us, amen, from the things that, had us entangled in the world. We don't go back. Amen. We don't go back and test the waters and say, well, you know what? I've been away from that for three years. I think I can handle it now. And I'm going to go back into the bar and I'm going to start witnessing, witnessing to somebody. Or I'm going to go in the crack house and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to draw some people out of there, praise God. If you see someone on the street, it's a different ball game. But you never want to go in the atmosphere of the, of the devil, amen, and try to win somebody, praise God. You could be triggered, amen. You could be influenced, praise God. We have to understand who the enemy is. We have to understand that the enemy does have power, praise God. Let me say it again, praise God. The enemy does have power, but there is a power living inside, a born-again child of God, amen, that supersedes any kind of power that the devil tries to control us with. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says, Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Again, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier, praise God. A soldier. Amen. Did you know that you were chosen? Did you know that God picked you? He handpicked you, praise God. He accounted you as a soldier of Christ. Praise God. And when you said, I volunteer, praise God, I enlist in this great kingdom of God, amen. God says, yes, amen. Now that you've enlisted, amen, and now that you're part of my, my army, praise God, and now that you're obedient to my word, amen, I'm going to help you do great things. <laughs> praise God. I'm going to help you, praise God. If you partner up with me, we're going to work together, amen, and we're going to go and we're, we are, we are going to have some tremendous victories, amen. We're going to go win, amen. We're going to win our world to Jesus Christ. 
Amen. But I have to say in this world, in this, in this life that I've lived, and I'm just talking about myself right now, I've encountered three enemies in my lifetime. Three enemies. Was that three? Three enemies. The first one was God. I encountered God. He was my enemy. The second one was the devil. The third one was myself. James 4.4 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God. Enmity with God. Now, is he talking about creation? No, he's not talking about creation. You see, the enemy of the world is the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye. Pride of life, praise God. And God is saying that that is an enemy toward God. If we look at something with a proud heart, like, oh, yeah, that's, that's me. I, I can handle anything. I don't need God. Or uh, uh, the pride of life, or the, um, what was the other one? Lust of the eye, pride of life, yeah. Um, these things are enemies. They're, they're enemies of my soul, praise God. And God knows if I allow myself to entangle in these things that it's only going to bring destruction on my life. Number two is the devil. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because the adversary, the devil, amen, as a roaring lion walk about seeking whom he may devour. Did you know that the devil cannot devour you? He's seeking to devour. He's trying to put thoughts in your mind, imaginations. He's trying to distract you from the purpose of God. He wants you to be disobedient to the word of God. He doesn't want you to follow the ways of God. He hates you. It's a strong word. But he hates you. He doesn't like anything that you stand for, praise God. I'll go one step further. He hates the creation of God. He hates humanity, praise God. Look at our world this morning. Our world is in a state of chaos. It's not because God wanted it that way. It's because the devil knows that he has a short time and he's doing anything he can to bring chaos in the world. Do you think for one moment that the devil's going to stop at that door right there and say, you know, that's God's people. I'm just going to stop right there. No, he will try to influence you more, praise God. He will try to impact your life more in the church house, amen. How does he do that? Well, you know, they're talking about me, amen. They, they don't like me, or they're, they're saying something bad about me, or they're going home and they're talking behind my back. He will do anything to disrupt, amen, your, your relationship with God and your relationship with each other. Yeah. Nothing drives me more crazy than when I hear or see brothers and sisters arguing and fighting. That isn't God. I said, that isn't God. That's one, or, one of two instances or circumstances. It's either the devil or it's ourself, praise God. Trying to lift ourselves up. Trying to make ourselves be more than what God has created us to be. Did you know that that's what Eve did? Adam and Eve had all the blessings of God. They had everything they ever wanted. And yet they were searching for more than what God had already had available for them. It's powerful. Here they were in a world of perfection. A world of perfection. And yet they thought that they needed more because they were dissatisfied with where they were. Maybe they thought that God was cheating them out of something. And so they desired to have more than what God had already had available for them. They couldn't look beyond their own self, praise God. Or you might ask, how can someone that's living in perfection do something like that? 
Well, really, it's quite easy, praise God. When you take your eyes off the master, praise God. When you're not allowing yourself to be rooted, amen, in a place called paradise, which is the church, by the way. When you don't allow your roots to go deep, when you don't allow the word of God to be planted, which is the seed, and produce fruit, yes, you're going to be distracted. Yes, you're going to be rebellious. Yes, when the lust of the flesh rises up, you're going to be drawn to that. That's why the Bible says, and that's why I taught this morning, we need to stir up the gift of God when we feel ourselves drifting. We need to be planted. Planted in the word of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. It says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Amen. We've allowed these lusts and these uh, carnal affections, amen, to no longer be part of our life. I like Brother Ryan, he's always, I need to suffer for God. I, I, I want to get a hold of this. Amen. And I love the passion. I love the passion. Because Brother Ryan recognizes this is what he has to do in, in order to stay connected to God. Amen. He knows what he has to be. Why? Because he's enlisted. Amen. He's in this family of God. Amen. And he wants to be an influence. He wants to be an influence toward other people. And he knows, amen, that he has to protect himself, amen. But he also knows that he cannot do this by himself. He has to use the tools, amen, because he understands his enemy. He understands the fight, praise God. He also understands that there is an armor that is given to him by God, praise God. And if we cheat ourselves out of the armor, amen, we're making ourselves vulnerable to every spiritual influence, every demonic attack, amen, that will come upon you, praise God. If your walls ain't up, you're open game. You're open game. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 13 says, put on, everyone say put on. Everyone say, I must put on. Put on the whole armor of God. Does it say some of the pieces of God's armor? No. It says the whole armor of God. Why does it say the whole armor of God? Because the whole armor of God protects the body, praise God. Protects the body. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Imaginations influences, attacks. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise God. Wherefore, take on the whole armor of God. Paul says it again, amen. That means there's, he, he, he means it. God means what he says when he says we have to put on the armor of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the evil day. And then when you've done all to stand, stand. Praise God. How do we overcome our flesh? Knowing that our flesh is probably our greatest enemy, it's important how it wars against us. If we don't control our flesh, if we don't control our mind, if we don't control the influence that come against us, guess what? It's going to control you. Let me say that again. If we don't control our flesh, our flesh will control us us. You see, our mind, your mind and my mind, is a powerful tool that God has given us. It's a powerful tool that is given to us by God. If we can subdue the mind, praise God, we can control the body. 
But if we allow the influences of the world to control our mind, amen, it will control our actions. So many people that I talk to, they don't realize how they got into the position they are. And the reason why is because they haven't allowed the Word of God to control their mind. They've allowed the world and the things that they see to control their mind. And it influences or it activates their desires, amen. And when that happens, you can't fight against that. Remember, demonic spiritual influences, amen, they are powerful. They are powerful. They know what appeals to you. They know what, what, what you're moved by. He's had 6,000 years to, to, to look at you and to look at your lifestyle. He knows what, 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 what moves you. He knows what gets you excited. And so he takes these subtle little things and he, and he puts them in your path, praise God. Here you are walking, amen, and you're, you're doing things great for God, amen, and for some reason you just you take your thought off, off, off of what God is wanting you to do and he puts these little subtle things in your path. And it trips you up. Listen, we have to stay sensitive to the Word of God. We have to understand where we are and where God has us in this world, amen. We have to learn, amen, that God has delivered us from a place of prison. God has released us, amen, and we have the power to live a liberated life. We have the power, amen. If I get tripped up, it's my fault, praise God. I said, it's, it's my fault if I get tripped up. It's not the devil's fault, praise God. He's just the influencer. Remember, the devil goes around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He can't devour me unless I allow myself to be devoured. I have the power. God has given me, amen, that armor to fight against the wiles of the devil. But if I take my eyes off the purpose of God, if I take my eyes off the calling of God, then I lose my focus and I become blinded to everything that comes against me. Everything that comes against me. Some of the most, some of the most powerful men in the world said to control the masses first, amen, change the way they think. Change the way they think. I would have never thought, Brother Frank, I would have never thought, Brother Ryan, I would have never thought that a small group of people could control the masses until I seen it with my own eyes. COVID-19. The whole world was shut down. Was it not? The whole world was shut down. Now, I understand there was death, and I understand all this, but even to this day, people are so fearful because of what might happen. They walk in fear because of what might happen. These are people that are filled with the Spirit of God. They won't even step into a church setting because they're afraid. Why are they afraid? Because their mind has been altered. If you go outside, you're going to get infected by this disease, praise God. So don't just stay in your house. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it here. Or you can watch it there. Just don't go outside. You're going to die. And he does that in the church. He does that in the church, amongst church people, church folk. If, this, if, if Satan can control the masses, 
If he wants to control the masses, he will change the way we think. We will lose all we will lose all the reality that God has, has given us, amen. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. James chapter 1 verse 13 and 15 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust. Everyone say, my own lust. My own lust. My own lust and enticed. So it's a step. He puts it in the mind and you think about it. And then you react on it. And then it brings forth sin. And sin manifests death. But every man that is tempted when he is tempted is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Then when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And so are we tempted of God? No, we're not. What causes us to be tempted? Lust, our own desires, our own cravings. I need that, God. God says, no, you don't. Do you realize that God can bless you in one of two ways? Watch this. God can bless you by giving you a brand new house, brand new car, a beautiful wife if God wants you to have it. Whatever, whatever, God can bless you. He can give you the desires of your heart according to the word of God. But did you know that God can also bless you by removing some things? Yes. Yes. Things that we feel like we need. I need that, God. I need that hot mama. He says, no, you don't. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Praise God. We all, we're, we're all men. We all have these desires, praise God. And Satan knows that. He's constantly throwing these desires, these desires and these cravings, amen. Because he's trying to draw you away, amen. But if you're planted, amen, in the church, amen, and your roots are deep, he cannot prevail, praise God. Because we understand as children of God that sin brings forth death. I brought this up uh, during teaching, but it says the task of a leader is to get people from where they are to where they have not been. Amen. Learning the word of God. Applying it to your life. Amen. Trying to God is trying to get us to a place that we've never been before. But we have to be willing to trust God. There are five ways that we can keep our spiritual man strong. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I think it's in your notes. It says in Jude chapter 1 verse 20, But ye beloved, building up yourselves with the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. God has you going through the construction process. Sometimes God has to tear down some things in your life in order to build you back up. Praise God. I said sometimes God has to remove some things in your life to build you back up. Praise God. He has to remove that worldly structure. Amen. So God can create a divine structure in your life. Amen. Number two. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. We need to take the word of God. We need to hide it in our heart. Amen. We need to use it, praise God, when the enemy of our soul, amen, tries to rise up against us. Amen. We need to use the word of God. We need to hide it. I love when I, uh, uh, and I'm probably not a good 
um, example today is when I memorize Scripture. I like to memorize Scripture, amen. I like to hide that Word of God in my heart, amen. Thy Word have I hid in my heart. That's number two, that I might not sin against thee. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Walking in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Having that relationship with God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Church is important. People of God are important. As the manner of some is, we believe Paul is writing, but exhorting one another... And so much more as you see the day approaching. How many believes that coming to church and hearing the word of God is important? How many believes that coming into the house of God and worshiping with fellow, fellow believers is important? How many understand that hiding God's word in your heart, amen, so you can use it when the devil tries to come against you, praise God, is important? It's so, so, so very important. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. And finally, Isaiah chapter 58 and 7, amen, or 6, it says, um, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Why? To loose the bands of wickedness, praise God. To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free. Why? That you might break every yoke. Verse 7, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that thou cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked that thou covereth him and thou thou hide that not thyself from thy own flesh. In other words, making yourself available. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thy health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Praise God. In other words, when we stay engaged in the things of God, when we stay connected to the power source, which is God's word, we are guaranteed victory if we continue to abide in the Lord. Praise God. Watch this. He has given us his word, and God cannot lie. That's so awesome. He has given us his word, and God cannot lie. There's so many wonderful promises in the word of God. There's so many great blessings in the word of God. And he has allowed us, his people, his children, those that have enlisted in this army, amen, those that are fighting each and every day, praise God, to experience these blessings. Why? Because we believe in the word of God. We believe in the Bible. We believe in the blessings, praise God. And as an unlisted soldier or a soldier that has given ourselves, praise God, we continue to fight the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith. Amen. I love you, Jesus. I want to pursue the things of God. But in order to finish this course, amen, we must be able to endure hardness as a good soldier. And that means we cannot be entangled with the affairs of this world. Let me say this. Every one of us, amen, are in a war. Until we die, we are constantly going to be fighting against the enemy. No longer do we have to fight against God. No, no longer do we have to push back against God. No longer do we have to resist God. We need to give ourselves to God. We've enlisted, praise God, into the army of God. 
Why don't we give ourselves as volunteers do? You know, the church is made up not of people that are drafted, amen. It's not something that we have to do. Nobody's forcing us to do that. We do it because we love Jesus. And because Jesus has delivered us from a world of chaos, a world of sin, the natural response, amen, is to take what God has given us and give it to somebody else. When God found me, I produced terrible fruit. I hated, I lied, I stole. I was an adulterer. I was a fornicator. I was all these things. This is what the tree was producing. This was my character. This is where my roots were planted. It was planted in a world of chaos. And this is all I knew. And when God came into my life in that little room that we talked about, where the presence of God came into that room and it broke me down and it revealed to me that there was a greater way. God didn't look at my faults and say, you know what, you're you're never going to change. No, God worked with me because he loved me. And the more seed that was that was put in me, praise God, the more I was able to develop into the tree that God originally had designed for me. Now that I'm planted, amen, in the Word of God, there's a different tree. And there's different, amen, fruit, amen, that is produced from this tree. It's love and joy and happiness and goodness and gentleness and meekness and faith And temperance, praise God. These are qualities, amen, that are of God, amen. And we take these characteristics, these qualities that come from God, and we allow others to partake off our tree, amen. They feed off of who we are and who God has molded us to be. They look at our life and they say, man, there's something different about you. I want what you got. And so the process starts over again. They don't change right away and you can't force them to change right away. It's a process. Everyone say it's a process. It is a process. For me, it took 20, 30 years to get me to the place where God could start using me. And still he's molding me and helping me and transforming me, praise God. But I've come to an understanding, Brother Jerry, that the more I give to God, the more I submit myself to God, the less I resist God, the easier it is for God to work with me and the easier it is for me to walk in this lifestyle. Because I've made up my mind that I have crossed over and I am not going back. I'm done. This is my way of life. This is all I desire. And I thank God for that. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your word today, God. I know, God, that we are more than conquerors today, God. And I ask you, God, to help us to stay equipped, God, in your word, in your spirit, God. Teach us thy ways as you're conforming us into your image. In Jesus' name. Amen.